the other thing that came to mind there, you, you were talking about, you've worked on probably the world's most complex toilet. Like how complex can a toilet be? Is it not just a hole with, you know, a bit of pressure pushing the stuff down? My friend, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that wasn't the case. Uh, wow. Let's see. So this is fun. Let's see. A couple of things to, you know, well, let's talk urination first. I'll use some science. I'll, I'll use the, uh, the actual words here, if that, that's okay with you. So urination, right? Urination, what's the important? Very different male, female anatomy, female anatomy, very complex uh, in handling urine in space. So when you urinate, of course, you pressure collecting urine. And so it goes down the right spot in the toilet is important. So that's first is ensuring that it's the trajectory is correct down the toilet. So that requires a vacuum. So imagine just your home vacuum, if you will. Don't try this at home, please. Uh, so vacuum. The vacuum itself creates a airflow around your body that has to be very specific. It cannot be any airflow. So that airflow has to be very specific because otherwise what happens is it, it creates a tornado effect that splatters. And now all you have is just eruption of urine everywhere around your butt, which is not good. What happens then is, of course, urine is splashed outside into the cockpit and now everyone's worried about dodging urine, ball, urine bell, uh, pull, pellets and then the balls, which can be a hazard and so forth. So, so collection of urine is important as it goes down the, to the hose what happens there is, well, now it's, guess what's in there? It's air and urine. Well, it's no big deal on earth. The air, what happens there? Air usually rises, right? Liquid goes down. Doesn't happen in space. So storage is premium, very premium in space. So I have to store this, not in a tank that has air and liquid, because that would be massive. I got to get rid of the air. I, I only can store liquid. That helps me be very efficient. So I have to separate the air from the liquid. Not an easy task. We have separators that are spinning, centrifuge, that are spinning at 15 to 20,000 RPM that essentially separate the liquid from the air. And the air gets pushed through a filter, takes all the bugs and microbes and all that stuff out and it gets back pushed out into the cockpit so we can reuse the air. And the liquid is condensed into a tank that's concentrated urine now, just concentrated, which has its own problem. Because guess what happens to concentrated urine? It starts to they evolve and formulate into other things and urea and other chemicals start to come out. So you have to deal with that. That's a separate problem. <laughs> the liquid that all went down the tube, there's remnants of liquid stuck on the sides. Well, guess what? Stuff happens if you leave that alone, if you don't clean it. On the uh, feces side, when you defecate, <laughs> even harder problem. <laughs> what people don't realize, so it's Urine is different. You're pushing it out. Well, feces is not being literally, it's, yes, it's being pushed, but not really. The reason why feces leaves your body when you go number two, if you actually just push, all things being equal, if you push and uh, feces comes out, what do you think happens to that feces? Uh, in the absence of gravity, it stays stuck to your body. It becomes a tail. The reason why it detaches from your body is because of gravity. It pulls away. Now, again, all things being equal, not talking about diarrhea, which is another problem in space. Even bigger problem, huge, uh, very unsafe problem. So let's just talk normal. <laughs> so you have to have something that pulls and tears it away from your body. That's what separates. So that tearing, you have to create a very special suction. So when you have a seat, you sit down on the toilet, you have to have a very specially curved seat that creates a very tight seal. That allows that air flow to be very specific at the specific spot on your body that tears that feces, brings it down into the tank. And then what happens to feces? When we leave the toilet, we know this, we've walked in, you know, gas stations or other places where it's not as clean. You can smell. Well, the smell comes from microbes. The smell is not the, it's the rubbish, it's the actual microbes in the toilet, uh, in the feces that are producing smells and gases. It's the microbes. You got to kill the microbes to stop that growth. So the, we actually have a, the tank has a little tiny tube that's uh, exposed to space. A little, little, basically think of a little hole that's leaking to space. So it's constantly getting that air that's in the tank that's allowing it to actually be ejected out into space. And because what happens is microbes can't survive without air like us. They need to breathe. So we basically kill them by suffocating them. And that's what creates a safer space for the, for the feces. So no smell, they don't grow in the, you know, don't have fungus and stuff growing, all that stuff that's happens. But only that, of course, you know, you can only sustain that for so long because you got to empty the tank. So 
I, I'm sure that's, this is not the whole story you wanted, but it was fun sharing. Thank you for asking.